Hey guys, how y'all doing out there? Time for another tutorial from Avid Studio Pro. Watch and learn. Today we're doing a tutorial on the laser effect in Avid Studio. Let's get into it. First, I went ahead and brought my footage down into the timeline and I moved the scrubber to a position where you can see the individual has fired the laser. The laser has already pulled the trigger. So I'm gonna right click on it, go to open effects editor, go to corrections, snapshot, and click on apply. Once you do, you're gonna save this to a location on your computer, click OK. Then you're gonna to need to use that image to create the laser that you're gonna be using in the laser effect. You need a program called Inkscape. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, now that we're in Inkscape, we're gonna go ahead and open up the picture. I'm gonna leave it on embed. Make this full screen here. I'm gonna go to the draw tool and we're going to draw the laser. So we're gonna click, 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 click and then select it by right clicking it. Then go to the selector tool here. Now we're gonna do Control Shift F and that's gonna bring up our fill and stroke. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to fill. We're gonna make it white. Then we're gonna to go to stroke style, leave it on the line, change that to zero. Then we're gonna click fill. We're gonna duplicate the object. And then we're going to click fill again and we're gonna to go to red. Then we're gonna move this down one step. We're gonna click on lower selection and now you see it's white because the red is behind it now. Now we're gonna to go to stroke paint and we're gonna make sure that it's on red. I'm gonna click on the stroke style, the line again. I'm gonna make the width, uh, let's make it 17. Now I see the red behind it and we're gonna add a blur to that. And we'll do 2.4 on that bad boy. And we're gonna click on the white and we're going to go to fill and we're gonna go to blur and change this blur to 0.5. And now we basically got the laser ray that we want. It's looking good. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to click on the image and we're gonna pull the image away from the laser. We're gonna highlight the laser. So it's selected. Then we're gonna export it. Click on export and you want it to be a PNG, you could make the name wherever you want, make sure it's in the right location, and click export. Um, I already have an image of it, so I'm not going to export it again. So now let's go back into the video editor and show you how to go ahead and add this laser to your gun. All right, now we're back in Avid Studio. First thing I did is I moved the scrubber to a position where the individual had just pulled the trigger and I went 200 of a second in, I split the clip there. Then I went to 200 of a second after the individual let go of the trigger and I split the clip there. So 200 of a second after he pulls it, 200 of a second after he lets it go. Now I have my footage here in the timeline. So now I have my photo that I created in Inkscape. I'm gonna drag that down, bring it into position. Split my clip here, get that off of there. Now I need to right click, open effects editor, 2D, 3D camera, and go to studio PIP. Want no preset on that. Want to show the media and tracks below. And we use position and size to put it where we need it to be. Do size first, it makes it easier so you don't have to keep doing it over and over again. Looks good right there. So now I have that in position, I want to go back to 2D, 3D, and I wanna add the 2D Editor Advanced. No preset on that as well. So we wanna go down to cropping. And what we need to do is we need to enable keyframes on this. 
on the first keyframe, I want to bring the gun in kind of close or the beam in kind of close. Then we want to go about two frames out and we want to bring the gun all the way back out again. Then we want to go to the end and at the end, we want the gun or the beam close to the gun again. That's good there. And then we want to go two frames back and we want the laser beam all the way out. What this does is it makes it look like the laser beam is actually being shot out of the gun. All right. So also what we want to do is we want to go to position and we want to go back to the first keyframe and we need to step through and make sure that the laser beam stays on the front of the gun. So if it moves, we need to move it down. So just keep stepping through so you see some movement and make sure you change your vertical or your horizontal as you need to do so. I stay pretty still so you can see that there wasn't much movement for me so I don't need to move the horizontal or the vertical much at all. But one last thing I do want to do is I want to go back to the first keyframe here and on this keyframe I want to go to uh, edge softness and we're going to change it to 35 so it makes the not look so cut off right there at the beginning. Let's bring it up a little bit. Back down. Let's go down. And make sure that the edge softness is zero on the other keyframe because you don't want it soft on those. And then go to the last keyframe and make sure the edge softness is at 35 on there. And we're good. So click OK. Now we want to go back to the video. We want to right click on that, open effects editor there. And we want to go to add ons, red giant, and red giant no light factory. We want to use the preset for the red laser. And we need to position that where it needs to be. I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit so I can see it a little better. Looks good there. So I'm going to bring my brightness back up to 100. Now I need to go ahead and enable keyframes here. And once again, I need to step through and use the light source scales. or well, not scale, but the light source to make sure that the laser stays on the front of the, the gun. Once you're done doing that, click OK. And you're good with that for now. So now you gotta go to your laser beam photo and you also have to add the laser, the, uh, laser beam flare to that. So we're gonna show media and tracks below. I'm gonna go to add-ons, red giant, red giant no. Once again, we're going to go to the red laser flare and we're going to put it in the position. Now you don't need to do the keyframes on this because it's just going to follow where you already keyframed and made the, uh, the image of the laser beam move around. So you don't need to keyframe that. You just need to click OK. One last thing I almost forgot. Do we need to do one extra thing on this? For the laser beam. You want to bring your brightness up on this. So you want to bring your brightness up to about 200 or so. And we'll click OK. 
So last few things you need to do. Go to the photo. Again, forgot to do this part. Sorry about that. Go to camera. Go to blur. Show media and tracks below. I'm going to put a blur of about three on this. Then you want to go to add-ons. Red Giant. Magic Bullet. Click edit. And you want to do Super Bloom. Go to Diffusion and Super Bloom. Click OK. Click OK. Go back to the video. Open Effects Editor on that. And you want to go to Correction. Matter of fact, let's go to Camera. And. To the 3D. Hate when I forget about these things. Just go to color and then base color correction. Alright, so for this one, you want to go to no preset. You want to enable your keyframes. And then about two frames in. You want to go ahead and bring your brightness up, maybe 25, because you want the to look like the laser beam affected the environment to make it brighter. Then you want to go to your red and change that to 74, because you want some red on the environment as well. Take it all the way to the end, add a keyframe there. Make sure the brightness is zero on this keyframe, and the red is zero. Step back two frames, bring the brightness up to 25, and the gain is 74, and it'll make it look like when your laser beam fired that there was also some change to the environment. Once you got all your four keyframes, click OK. Add your sound and that is it. You are done.